I'm Celine LaTulip, and today I'm going to talk to you about this great web-based application called EarSketch, which allows you to make music by coding. So to get started, um, I'm going to give you a little tour of the interface, and then we'll actually make a little bit of music. EarSketch was created by Jason Freeman and Brian McGarrico and a team of other people at Georgia Tech, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So this interface has a number of different panes and panels which can be moved around. And so we'll go through them one at a time. Over here on the left is what I call the tools area. Right now it's showing the sound browser where you can see all the different little music clips that you can use to put into your song. There's hundreds and hundreds of different music clips and you can listen to them to test them out. Okay, you can find different instruments, look through by genre, and different artists have contributed uh, sound clips to this that you can use. And there's pages and pages you can see down here of different types of music clips. Okay, so you can also click here to add your own sound by either uploading a music file or by um, recording sound. So that's the sound browser. If I click the second button down on the left here, what I get is the scripts browser. So when you create music in EarSketch, you're actually writing a script and then you can save it. So if you notice over here, the um, top right corner, it's got my name here, I've logged in. So that means that any scripts that I write are automatically saved out to the cloud. And by coming over here and looking through my scripts, I can delete them, I can edit them, I can copy them to make duplicates, and I can also share them with other people by sending them a link so that they can open them in your sketch and play with them as well. That's the scripts browser. The third button down changes the tools area to the API browser. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and in this case, the application is EarSketch. The Programming Interface, that's the set of programming instructions, which are here, that you can use and put in your script to make music. If I click on any of them, they expand so I can see more details. And I can search for a particular programming instruction by typing up here. Okay, so over here in the left hand side, we have the digital audio, or sorry, in the center top, we have the digital audio workstation. Right now this is empty, but once you start creating music, the various tracks of your song will appear here stacked in this window. And there's media control buttons at the top, so I can play the song, this orange loop here is set, so right now if, if I have um, some tracks in here, it would loop through them, and there's a volume control and so on. Below the digital audio workstation is the code editor, and this is where my scripts are going to be written and where I edit them and so on. I have just one script open right now, untitled.js. So EarSketch can work using um, JavaScript, which is this one, scripts, or Python scripts. And you can switch between these two modes by clicking on this little settings button here. Um, so you can see right here um, that I can switch between Python mode and JavaScript mode. This is also where I would go to save my script to the cloud, save it as a WAV file or MP3 file to my computer, or even share my, my music to SoundCloud. So if I click a plus sign, I'm going to get a new script, and every new script you create has some basic code in it to get you started. And this code has to be in your script, an init code that gets things started in the EarSketch uh, application set tempo which says how fast your music is going to be so this 120 is 120 beats per second and I can change that or um, and at the bottom is a finish command which ties everything up when you've stopped playing your music um, so to write music I'm going to add instructions programming instructions in here so that's the code editor and actually below the code editor, it's hidden right now, but I can open it. This is the console. The console is the place that will show you errors or show you progress when you try to run your script. So when I've written some music in here by typing instructions, I have to click the run button up here to tell your sketch to say, go ahead and make this into some music, which will be displayed up here in the digital audio workstation. Sometimes when you click run, your sketch is going to say, wait a second, there's a problem with the script instructions that you typed. And those errors are going to show up down here in the console. 
Finally, over here at the right, this is the curriculum window. So this has a bunch of very step-by-step -step, um, explanations and instructions on how to get started with your sketch and how to use all the different tools and programming instructions and so on. Um, it's got examples of sounds and how they've been made and so on. So this is a great resource. Now, before we get started, it's important to note that the windows in EarSketch can all sort of be moved around and adjusted. So I can double click on that to close the curriculum window because I don't need it right now. I can click on this to close the console because I don't need it right now. And this way I have more space to see my script and more space to see my digital audio workstation. Note that I can make any of these things show up again using these buttons over here. So for example, if I need the curriculum window, I can click on this button and it appears. I can click on that button, it goes away. So just keep in mind that these buttons are over here to help you get back windows if you accidentally close them. All right, so let's get started. I wanna actually make some music. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my cursor in here in my script and I'm going to go to the programming API and the one command that's really important for putting music into your song is fit media. So if I type the first few letters, it actually helps me find that. And here's the fit media um, instruction. So it looks kind of complicated, fit media, file name, track number, start location, end location. It's got all this stuff in here. And you might think, oh my goodness, do I have to type all of that over here? But you don't, it's really great. There's this little paste button, so I can actually click on paste. And there, the command has been pasted into the script and I'm gonna add a semicolon at the end because JavaScript commands should always end with a semicolon. Now, I can't just run this because these things here are called parameters and I need to actually change them to values. So file name, I need to say what music file or sound sample I wanna use. So this is where the sound browser actually comes in handy. And it's also important to note that when you click on these instructions over here, you get all this extra information. So here it says parameters, file name, and it says audio file to be placed on the track. Typically, this is a constant from the sound browser. So that tells me I can go to the sound browser and get a sound and use that for the file name. So I'm gonna go over to the sound browser and click on the instruments. Um, oh, and I need to get rid of this fit me because it's trying to find instruments that have that name. And so what kind of instruments do I want? There's tons and tons here of different things. So I probably want to set, search for some kind of um, dubstep and see what I get. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of dubstep sounds and I can play them and find one that I like. I like this one. So if I like this one and I want to add this, then again, I can hit the copy and it just replaced, because I had file name selected, it replaced file name with that sound sample name. So that means I don't have to type it all. Now, track number, I actually want to start filling up the tracks and I don't have any yet, so I'm going to start at one. And then start and end location are about the measures within your song. So music is separated into four beat measures, typically, and I'm going to start at measure one, and I want, typically you go in sort of sets of four, and so I want measures one through eight. So my end location is actually gonna be measure nine. That's where it's going to stop. So filling, starting and filling measure one all the way up until we start measure nine, so it won't fill measure nine. All right, let's see what happens now when I click run. All right, so now you can see that I have a track up here and you can see that it's actually repeating. So this um, song or this sound clip is two measures long and so it's repeating over these eight times and I can move this red line to the beginning and click play. <laughs> And if I go down and play with the tempo, I can actually make this faster or slower. So let's try 110 and hit run. And let's play it again. Okay, so that's now slower, maybe slower than I want. Let's try making it faster and I'll go up to 130 and hit run. Okay, 
I like that better. All right, and now I can add another track to this. So I'm going to go back to my code browser and fit media, there's my fit media command, paste that in. And again, I'm going to replace file name and find another um, instrument. Um, I don't know what most of these things are, but that's okay. That makes it kind of fun to explore a rave chord. And let's get rid of that rave chord. Cool, I'll try that one. Okay, so I copy and, oops, it didn't actually replace file name, it just put it in there, so do that. Now, track number, this is going to be my second track and it's going to appear below the first one, so I'm gonna put that as two. And I don't want it to start right away. I think I want, to, want it to start at measure two and then end at the same time at measure nine. And let's run that and see how those two things sound together. Go to the beginning and play. Okay. And finally, let's add um, a beat to this. So let's go to the code browser and another um, common code that you might want is the make beat code. So here we go, we'll copy that in. And make beat again also takes a sound file as the source. So we'll go back to sound and let's try to find a beat among, and let's clear this. Okay. 8 bit video speak and spell. Okay. So let's use that because it's just going to take the very first part of that clip. And so we'll copy that one in. And then this is going to be on track three. And we'll put it at measure three. And then string is actually a string that gives you, where you have to type in a string of zeros and dashes and plus signs to make your pattern rhythm. So I'm going to go like um, beat, 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 space, space, beat, beat, space, space, beat, beat, space, space. All right, and if we, and this will not repeat, this will just make a beat at that measure for this many notes at the current tempo. So let's run this and see what this looks like. And you can see here where it's added a pattern of beats where it takes a tiny bit from the beginning of that clip and it'll play it sort of almost like a, almost like a percussion instrument. So let's go back to the beginning and play this and see how this sounds. And it could sound awful, just warning you. Lots of experimentation in here. Okay, so now we've made a beat. Actually, it kind of didn't really sound too bad. Let's listen to it a little bit. Let's listen to that beat again by just repeating that. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about com uh, computer science, you might realize that you might want to be able to repeat that. And so we can start using code to, to have this repeat throughout the song if we want to. Um, but that's for another video to learn how to do that. For now, I would say your best bet is to go ahead and play with this interface, try the fit media commands and the make beat commands and explore all the different sounds in the sound browser. Well, you won't be able to explore them all because there's tons, but explore some of them and, and check it out and, and have fun. And when you're done, make sure that you save your script to the cloud, which will prompt you to give it a name. So I'll say this is Celine's test February 3rd. Save it. And now if I go to my script browser, here's Celine's test February 3rd, and I can actually share this and I can send people the link to this so that they could see the script and play it in your sketch and edit it themselves. I can also, as, you, as I mentioned before, I can share it to SoundCloud and actually export this sound out to SoundCloud to publish for people to, to uh, listen to. All right, so that's it for an intro tutorial to ear sketch. Um, go and log yourself in and start playing and have fun.